Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this glorious day. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm your hostess with the mostest here to discuss yet another way to become the boss of your brain. This is what Minecraft is all about. And when we become the boss of our brain and take charge, we are just on our way to living our very best life. You know, I think, you know, we've been talking this week about uh, Greg McGowan's. I hope I'm saying his last name right. Book Essentialism. I'm just telling you, I am, I am probably his newest and and now biggest fan. I feel like I am, because it's amazing. You know, I was saying, you know, to all of you, you know, over the past couple of episodes that it's it's wonderful and like the light bulb goes on for me with inspiration and oftentimes it's exactly where I'm at and what I need to do too. You know, and as we said a couple of times. When the when the um, student is ready, the teacher appears, and, and Greg is my teacher for right now, and so I wanted to kind of take this a step further. Okay, so we talked about essentialism, as far as honing in on that one priority. We talked about that right back in the 1400s. There was no plural for that. It's just the one main thing, and obviously this is fluid. What's our, you know, number one priority on that day might not necessarily be the same priority next week, or it might. But wherever we focus our attention, wherever we place our mind's attention is what's going to do well. And so take that a step further uh, because I talked about being in in a mastermind group, which has just been amazing. I've just met the most incredible people. And when I said to you that they turned me on to essentialism, actually, the first book they were talking about was Greg McGowan's book called Effortless, which is actually his second book. But the first one they were talking about, you know, to me. And so I ordered them both and started reading the first one first. And then I just had to dip into this one because I I, I, I think my mind is, well, actually, I don't think I know. My mind is, um, you know, I'm driven by an interest-based nervous system as I'm a fast minder. I don't, I prefer not to use you know, the ADHD ter- term or it's a misnomer, but anyway, so I just got pulled into effortless. It was as it was sitting on our, uh, on our table over there and it, because it takes it to another step. So he kind of wraps around the essentialism, hon- honing in the, on that one thing. And then he takes it to this new place where he asks what could happen in your life if the easy but pointless things became harder and the essential things became easier. And also, you know, when I was pondering about doing this topic for a podcast today, I was looking at another one of Greg's very simple illustrations. And I've less is more. I'm all about the simplicity. You know, and there are two two pictures of a jar in, you know, black and white, look looking like they're hand drawn. And, you know, putting the big rocks in one and then like the pebbles on top and there's not enough room. So the big rocks represent the things we, the essentials we just can't miss. It's time with the partner, time with the kids, the job, you know, things we just can't not do. Health, all that stuff. And then, um, and then the, the pebbles are like, you know, maybe all like the projects, the fun stuff we really love that um, is, you know, second to all those bigger things. And if you put you know, the, the, the pebbles in first, there's no, there's just not a lot of room for the big rocks is the point. And so, um, you know, when there's too many big rocks and you can't skip any of it. So this was the thing. And I really felt this because I'm in this right now. That's why I felt it when there are too many big rock mean like the bigger rocks, meaning all the stuff you can't skip, then what do you do? Like, how do you become an essentialist when it feels like, you know, the, you know, most of there's too many essentials, you can't cut them out. What do you do then? And so the purpose of the effortless book is so cool. I'm only a little bit into it. It's okay. Like what if you, if you can't cut them, you can at least make them easier and easier to carry, to carry out whatever it is you have to do until it becomes effortless. So it's about not getting rid of when you have too many, but making it all easier. It reminds me of just lots of things. Um, work, work smart, work smart, not hard, as they say, is one. And I think in order to do this, which he was talking about earlier in the book, is we're just so programmed to do the opposite. We just feel, and I definitely feel this at a fabulous 58. I don't know if it's our generation, because my husband and I have talked about it a lot. Um, And it definitely in the States, and that if you're not constantly being productive, 
you're you're lazy or something. Or if you're not staying after work, I'm thinking like more like Wall Street and all that. You're not staying after work. Your job's not of that not that important. Or you know, there's always more you could be doing. And not, I don't mean just Wall Street either. I I think like um, you know, our, our daughter stays after all the time at school. She teaches third grade and she's making a huge difference with these kids and she stays after because she wants to and she loves them and she's constantly trying to plan new things and all that and I think no matter what field you bring it into we are kind of grilled that we've got to you know go 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 do more 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 and if we don't that we don't care or we're lazy or we're not ambitious or we're not you know motivated or I, I, I don't know but that's definitely something that we, that's in our programming, I think, that we've got to get past that so we can actually have the same, if not better, results without running ourselves on the ground and getting burnt out. And he says somewhere in here, so I'm paraphrasing, that there's no medal for burnout. And and I said that in my, um, you know, my first book when I was talking about that, you know, I was talking about that earlier in an episode recently, striving for the purple heart mothers in the universal pursuit of honor with young motherhood. And there's no honor to martyrdom either or burnout. And and I think of, you know, my, again, my least favorite children's book ever, the giving tree, you know, when she, she, the tree, you know, the, the little boy and first she gives her the fruit, the apples off of it. Then he wants to leave. I forget the exact order. And then the bark he uses for something. Then he makes a canoe out of, you know, most of her. And in, in the canoe, and then eventually all that's left to give is the stump. And and that's just not like we're programmed for that, especially as women and especially, especially as women who choose to be mothers. And there is no, uh, there is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to roll. I, I was very careful to not roll, role model that for our sons or daughters, that this is, you know, to aspire to be a stump where all you can offer somebody is a place to sit on you. I mean, no, I mean, that's just not I think we should call that book codependency for kids. That's really what we're, that's really what we're teaching them is to just, you know, you know, just aspire to be, you know, a used dish rag is just not what I want for my kids for sure. So the flip side of that, rather than, than, oh, you know, allowing ourselves to become drained and burnt out. And also when we are drained and burnt out, not only do we have nothing to give to ourselves or other people, we're also not that much fun to be around. I mean, I'm sure if you've been around anybody burnt out, they're pretty crispy you know, negativo and no one really, you know, wants to be around those people. So instead we can consciously work at, um, first filtering down to the essentials, what you, what you have to have to have to do, let go of everything else. And like I said before, I've at various workshops and conferences, I, where I've presented, I, I actually have people come up with a not to do list. I've been doing that for a while. So Greg and Greg and I are on the same page, so to speak. Uh, but then really work at, um, letting go of the resistance. And I had such a, a come together moment today with the people I listen to and read. Greg Abraham Hicks is all about energy over effort, all about it. I mean, just, just because, and then he gets into talking about um, like the, like linear results and then residual result, results. So when we get into this effortless place where we are using lots of muscle memory, lots of you know, habitual mind work and getting rid of the crap, which Wayne, Wayne Dyer talks about a lot too. Wayne Dyer says this, has been saying this forever. When we've got, you know, a lot of the negative, I'm, I'm, and I'm picturing, he has another, Greg has another illustration in here. Oh, there it is. Where uh, it's just like a jumble. It just looks like a ball of twine that's not neatly rolled together. And he's got complaining, burdens, anger, grudges, fear, distractions, exhaustion, and outdated assumptions. And, and and then we can't, we can't like enter this effortless state when it's clouded over with all these negative emotions, because the the brain, the mind is going to go, especially if there's a, um, the threat stuff when it perceives like it's, like it's being threatened, you know, the whole fear definitely throws a gigantic wrench in creativity and doing anything with ease. And so does anger. So as resentment, like all these things just clog up, um, you know, the, the brain's ability to, to do anything at e- easily because the brain is going to hone in on all those negative emotions first out of, you know, for survival purposes. And I, I like how, uh, 
Greg used um, the greatest, one of the greatest free throw shooters ever in basketball. Um, so I'll just read this little part because it's, it just, it just, he says it way better than I could. The best free throw shooter ever is not Michael Jordan or Steph Curry. It's Elena Dell Dunn. Her success rate at the free throw line across her career is 93.4%. Imagine that. 93.4%. That's not just the highest in the WNBA history, but higher than any player in the NBA history as well. If you look at her postseason record, it's even higher. It's 96.4%, which is crazy because that means the pressure, when the pressure was more, she did even better. It's just awesome. Put simply, she is the best free throw shooter ever. Her secret is to trust a simple process she has practiced since eighth grade. She steps up to the line, finds the dot with her right foot, lines up her feet, takes three dribbles, makes an L with her arm, then lifts and flicks. If you keep it simple, less can go wrong, she says. The most important part of the process, not overthinking it. The biggest on the foul, the biggest thing on the foul line is you can get you can you can let too much get inside your head. This is what we're talking about. In other words, the secret to done success is her ability to get into what I call the effortless state. Right? So so Greg's talking about um not just not allowing all those old stories, all the old emotion, the old assumptions, the old memories that have old emotion attached to them. Clear that shit out. That's what we're talking about. He says, so he said, you are like a supercomputer designed with extremely powerful capabilities. You're built to be able to learn, to learn quickly, solve problems intuitively and compute the right next action effortlessly. Your optimal under optimal conditions, your brain works at incredible speeds. But this is the thing. And then he gets into like when a computer, um, I forget if he has a virus or what, but when it's overworked and the and the memory's all clogged up, like my current computer is actually, we all know what happens. It runs very slowly and not much gets in. You have to reboot a bunch of times, at least I do. And it just doesn't work as efficiently. And so this is common sense. And so I just, I just thought of a Ben Franklin quote, though, because Ben Franklin said, if sense were common, more people would have it. I just, I love that. So I think about uh, what I teach my cognitive psych class, which is, you know, the, the cognitive load theory, which talks about this exact thing, too. Not only when we're, when we're, our working memory is all clogged up with anxiety and all this, ne- all this negativity we were talking about, but also the task, different tasks take more juice than others. So, example, you know, taking a physics exam, unless you're a physicist or, you know, like that's your major in college or graduate school, you know, most people consider that to be a high cognitive load. Chess, unless you're a chess master, if you're just a regular person playing chess, that takes a lot of cognitive juice to make those moves. Not so much, you know, if you're a chess master. And, you know, other things, trying to fix an, you know, an engine in a car, unless you're a mechanic, would take a lot of juice. In something like reading a book, you know, watching Netflix, staring at the fireplace like I'm doing right now, they, that doesn't take a lot of, of energy. We've got to really, though, pay attention where we allocate that energy to what we, what, what we you know, sort of where we, where we choose to place our energy. Because if you picture it like a circle with 100% of attention, all we have, you know, on any given day to, to do anything, we don't want to divvy out those pieces of pie to, to, to things that just don't matter very much to us. Okay, so in addition to the physics example, the chess example, and all that, the brain, our brain is programmed to prioritize um, what Greg says, uh, prioritize what Greg calls emotions with high effective value, like fear, resentment, anger. These strong emotions will generally win out, leaving us with even fewer mental resources to devote to making progress on the things that do matter. So then, then he says, when your computer is running slowly, like we just said, all you have to do is hit a few buttons to clear all the browsing data and immediately the machine works smoother and faster, right? In a similar way, you can learn simple tasks to rid yourself of all the clutter slowing down the hard drive of your mind. Hitting a few buttons, you can restore to your original effortless state. And then, you know, Greg uses an example of like, you just had like a hard day at work, uh, or you just, 
boss said something to you, you forgot your keys, stubbed your toe, your toe, you know, whatever. At the end of that day, you come home to, you know, a warm meal, a hot shower and a good night's sleep. And you wake up feeling, you know, completely different after that. It's kind of like a reboot. You wake up feeling clear headed. And he says, when you return to your effortless state, you actually feel lighter. I think we've all experienced this, you know, and he says in two senses of the, of the word, first, you feel less heavy, unburdened. That's huge. Once you dump off some stuff, maybe have a nice, if you have a partner or, or a roommate or a friend or, or call, so call your best friend on the phone, when you kind of just share all that, your day didn't go out, blah, 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 blah. Then you have the nice dinner, the hot bath, you know, and watch a movie or something. You just, you do, you just feel lighter. It's like you emptied your mind. Right. And he says, um, he said, you, you're not weighed down and suddenly you have more energy, but lighter also means more full of light. When you remove the burdens in your heart and the distractions from your mind, you're able to see more clearly. You can discern the right action and, and light. You can, sorry, you can discern the right action and light the right path. The effortless state is one in which you are physically rested, emotionally unburdened and mentally energized. You are completely present. Now that's huge. We, oh, we were talking about that. I don't know. I did a, I did a video this morning. So I, so, oh my gosh, you got to be present because I, when we're not present. You know, we are basically missing out on our lives. I mean, that's just how it is. I, it, so you are completely present, attentive, and focused on what's important in that moment. You're able to do what matters most with ease. You are able to do what matters most with ease. This is what we're talking about with the, you know, the effortless state of being. So once again, my inspiration came from Greg McCowan um, and his book, Effortless. Make it easier, making, make it easier to do what matters most. Man, this is great. All right. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, effortless day.